Let's do it. I always have to wait. And we're live. What's up, guys? Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com. Back, as always, with Billy from Anxiety United. Hello again. What's up, dude? It's all good. So we are doing our Anxiety 101 series, and we're up to episode 11, because as I was just telling Billy, this one goes to 11. Let's see who gets that. If you get the reference, please make a comment. <laughs> I've got homework. I've got homework. <laughs> Billy, has, Billy has homework to do to get the reference. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so we're up to episode 11 in our Anxiety 101 series. Um, we were talking about an article that I wrote a few years ago. We'll link the article in the video descriptions wherever you happen to be watching so you can read along. And we've gone just kind of topic by topic through the article and we've discussed each topic. And today, since we're out of topics in the article, we're kind of going to... It's over. It's over. It's kind of over, but we'll find a way to keep it going because we're good yeah, that yeah. way. We are going to look at, and I'm looking at some comments, we're going to do some Q&A, right? So yes, yes. over the course of the few months that we have been doing this series... Uh, we've had people ask us a lot of really cool questions on YouTube and Facebook and social media, and we're going to go through and, and kind of answer some of them for the benefit of those of you who have not asked questions or seen the comments. So, um, I might just add without no, any preparation, no, or, or no prep, no prep. <laughs> I, I, you know what? It's probably safe now since we're all the way at episode 11 and we finished the article yeah. to let everybody know that we had almost no prep on a lot of them. <laughs> So we would just sort of like talk for three minutes and, okay, let's go. So Let's, let's see what happens. This is improvisational podcasting is what this is. That's it. It's the way, it's the it way forward. It's, to, it's, it's the way forward. It's, it's the wave of the future. So yeah. I, I am going to go through some of my comments. And, and I think what we found is for those of you who have come back on each of our different channels and, and asked questions again and again, that's, that's awesome. We, we appear to have some regular viewers who actually look forward mm -hmm. to us doing this, which is super awesome. And people say nice. very nice things. And uh, I would say overall, some of the comments just are really excellent because we seem to actually be helping some people in some crazy way. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It makes me feel good. So well, I'm going to throw it to you to start. Get, let's see some of the questions that you've got. Let's, let's pick a common question from the Anxiety United side. I say it. So the first question that I came across is from Art Josu or something like that. Sorry for the pronunciation. Okay. It's a quick question. Has, has either of you lost weight during your battle with anxiety? He lost or she lost uh, 10 to 15 pounds in the last four months. So obviously, I don't know whether they're concerned. I would imagine that they're concerned at weight loss, maybe. Probably. For me, I'll kick it off. But sure. personally, I, I, when I first met my wife, I was like 10 and a half stone, and I was for years. Right. But then probably over the last maybe five, six years, I've put a fair bit of weight on, like three I'm now just 14 stone, pretty much bang on. And the stone is so seven pounds. Yes. 14. Four, 14. Wow, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that makes it sound even worse, doesn't it? But, yeah. I mean, I'm not crazy overweight. I'm pretty tall. I'm like six foot three. So, yeah. But it's just like I've put weight on, but I don't think that's anything to do with anxiety. I think it's more to do with the fact that I haven't been that active. Yeah. So, that's probably, you know, whether if I'd have had anxiety or not, if I'd have sat on my ass for the last 10 years, I'd have put four stone on anyway, you same know, so that's my kind of, yeah. yeah. Um, did I lose weight because of anxiety? I, I did not lose any weight because of anxiety. I, I'm a hundred pounds lighter than I was a while ago, but I don't think it had anything to do with anxiety. It had to do with coming that's off. due to exercise. It was due to and exercise. And also I stopped a medication that I was taking, which was packing on some weight. So, but no, for me, and I think that that leads to like, um, some people, when they really are struggling with anxiety, they can't eat. They don't want to eat. And mm. some people, all they want to do is eat. So I think it's, yeah, yeah. it's super common to hear you've well, lost it. You a see, lot of weight or you see, a lot of weight. Sometimes people that are suffering with stress really bad, they'll lose weight. But then you see some people comfort eat. Yes, yeah. Obviously, it's the other way. So there's, there's no right or wrong answer, is there? It's Yeah. I think the answer to that question is it's common to both gain and lose weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or neither. Even, mm. And even during – even people who don't have anxiety, if they're just dealing with some stressful events, you know, death mm. of the family and that sort of thing, a lot of people's weight will fluctuate in those events. Yeah, yeah. So There's one thing I was just, just picking up on there, but like my wife in the past was prescribed antidepressants and I and when she was, she was reading on forums and all this kind of stuff and a lot of the comments, whether they were women – Probably, I would say the majority were, but they were all concerned about weight gain yes. taking meds. Yes. So that's like something whether that would contribute to somebody's weight going up, maybe. It, but is that a thing? Is it, that a thing that the meds make them gain weight, or is it the fact that they feel more relaxed and then perhaps eat more because they're relaxed? Or well, 
Without going too much into the meds thing, and we'll probably do an episode just on that. Yeah, I, yeah. I can tell you that from a weight standpoint, here my experience with antidepressants was I put on a huge amount of weight. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it's for two reasons. There's something chemically going on there that, mm-hmm. that I believe has is some contributing factor to the weight just kind of piling up on, on me. Like a metabolism. A, a metabolism. Effect. There's, there's, there's got to be some – I don't exactly know what it would be, and I'm complete – I have no scientific basis for claiming this other than mm-hmm. just seeing thousands and thousands of people that have had this complaint that, mm-hmm. you know – and I remember – when my doctor prescribed it, my, it was just my general tra- practitioner way back in like 1996. And he said, well, you'll actually, this will make you feel full. You'll lose weight. Mm. And exactly the opposite happened. I just started gaining weight very quickly. And I, I think there's, there may be some particular chemical, biochemical reason for that. But I will tell you the other thing for me, and I, and I have a lot of people who would corroborate this. They just dampened my judgment to such a degree that you right. know that you shouldn't eat four slices of pizza, but you do it anyway because it tastes mm. good. Mm. Um, and, and it's very common in many antidepressants to have that. People who start to drink more alcohol, mm. spend more money that they don't have, eat things they shouldn't eat. Like it just – bad judgment It becomes a hallmark yeah, of some yeah. of these meds yeah. and that contributes to, mm. to the weight gain too. So. It's a thing. Weight loss, weight gain during anxiety. It's a real thing. I was going to make a point as well that perhaps like the only reason that you see this is me thinking maybe that the only reason that you see that people are posting on forums saying they've gained weight yes. as a uh, as a result of their meds is because the ones that haven't aren't going on the forums posting I haven't gained weight. That's true. You know, that's called reporting bias. And that's a real thing. Yeah. So, mm. you know, nobody goes on the Internet to say, I love this. We, we, we yeah, all yeah. complain. So because I remember when I gave up smoking, like it's been 12 months now yeah. and I was searching forums at the time. Like, does this happen? Or yeah. I was at a bad cough after six months. But there weren't anybody there that says, oh, I quit smoking and I was absolutely bloody brilliant no. because <laughs> they were out there doing whatever on another forum. That's exactly doing right. Something else, you know. Yeah, we don't report the good things. Nobody takes the time to say, yeah, quit yeah. smoking and nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> we only report bad stuff. You Maybe know. we should set that up. That's a the, new. Yeah, nothinghappened.com. That's going to be. <laughs> our thing like tell us when nothing happens because it'll make everybody feel better <laughs> so yeah, yeah yeah reporting bias but i think the answer to the question is weight loss and weight gain with anxiety very common either way mm. either way so is it um, your turn for a call yeah i'll throw one out here here's one this is laura i'm not going to say her last name i got this one on facebook she asked a couple of times about this so hey laura if you're watching she asked about Hello. fatigue so her, her question is um yeah, I'll actually load the question here. My internet appears rather slow. Um, she says, well, it's a very long message, but she asked a couple of times. It, it, it's fatigue is her big thing. She wants to know, like, when you go out and you challenge yourself, like a walk to the post box or a trip to the shopping mall or whatever it is, and you're doing your exposure work, how do you deal with the extreme fatigue that comes with that? So at the end, she feels, and maybe other people do too, and that's why I'm sharing her particular question. Laura, I hope you don't mind. Um, she just feels incredibly fatigued like she could collapse. Mm-hmm. And, and how do you deal with that is the question. So I could tell you what I, what I said because it's just my experience that I often, yes, after a panic attack or after a really hard exposure, I would feel drained you know, mm-hmm. and, and fatigued. But the difference is, yes, I'm tired. I'm physically drained and exhausted for sure. But... When you describe it at the point where the fatigue, you, you literally feel like you can't take another step because you think you're going to collapse. That's an extreme description of that. Yeah. So my, my response to Laura was to try and remain as objective as possible when you're describing your state. So fatigue is a real thing. And when we're doing this hard work, we're going to get tired and it's going to be physically and mentally draining. But there's a difference between drained and tired and, and literally being unable to stand upright. That's two different, yeah, yeah. Two different things yeah. completely. So... I dealt with the fatigue just the way anybody would deal with it. You know, if I was tired, I would rest a little bit. But mm. but I guess I never got to the point where I would describe that fatigue as debilitating. And the I que- think that's the – Right. Yeah. And the question becomes, is the fatigue actually truly debilitating or do you just feel like it is? Because it feels like isn't doesn't equal reality sometimes. I think when you're in that – when you're in the mindset, when you're in that moment – it perhaps does. And I, I've referred to it before when I said, am I the only person that suffers with anxiety 24 seven? Right. And like the reality is that I don't, but when you're in the moment, so when you are feeling that extreme fatigue, if you really sat down and judged 
or perhaps a, a good way to think of it would be if, say, if your partner, your wife, your boyfriend or whatever, if they said to you, I feel like I can't take another step. Yeah. What would you say to them, you know? That's think good. about that, like, yeah. you know, could you just nip to the kitchen and get me a glass of water? I'm sure that you could. Right. And that's true. And that, that's the mm-hmm. remaining, remaining objective thing. So I guess the answer to the fatigue question is it's normal to be tired and, and drained from this sort of work. But it's, you just have to be really careful about how you describe it. That's, that's I think probably. like with the, with the poll that I did and we did the, when we did the symptoms one, the fatigue was the top. It was the most common thing that people struggled with, yeah. with was fatigue, sure. just exhaustion or, you know, you feel like you just haven't got the strength to, to do anything, let alone push yourself. You know, that's the, yeah. but it's understandable when you're putting yourself under that much tension and that much pressure. Yeah. It, it totally is understandable. And I think yeah, yeah. I, I would say that when I was really struggling with anxiety at its worst, I, I was, you know, I was tired all the time without a doubt. Mm. It wears you mm. down. I mean, I don't mm. know if you've experienced the same thing. I just, uh, yeah, definitely. Constantly but another, tired. A good thing to combat that is like, although it thinks that it, your mind thinks that it's backwards, but exercise. So even though you feel tired, yes. if you do exercise, it has the reverse effect. You would think that you would be more tired, yep. but it doesn't, does it? It, it rejuvenate you it would and for me even initially in the early days when I, I wasn't going to the gym and doing real exercise but I would just get there's a treadmill in my basement and I would just get on the treadmill and walk it literally like one and a half miles an hour like tiny very slow and I would get off 15 minutes later or 12 10 minutes later and actually feel a little bit more rejuvenated and I think yeah. so much of that is because of the mental thing like yes I'm I am tired I am mentally drained but I've proven to myself that, look, I, I was able to walk slowly on this treadmill for 10 minutes. Mm. A- and it changes your perspective on that fatigue. And, and the other thing that helped me too was, um, and this is a whole different topic, but I would use the concept of modeling. So like I would let the people around me be models for me. So I thought I, you meant you were standing in the mirror, you know. I was voguing. <laughs> Modeling. So I would look at the people around me and think, and especially here in the U.S., you hear about it all the time, we're sleep deprived, generally speaking. In in the West in general, I'm sure in the U.K. too, you guys are generally Mm -hmm. sleep deprived. You know, we don't sleep enough. And and I would look around me and say, you know what, the the media and, and, and science is telling me that most of the people around me are generally sleep deprived and they probably feel like crap. So they they're tired, too. The guy in the car next to me is tired, too. Just he doesn't care. He's just tired. He gets a cup of coffee and goes to work. So yeah, yeah. I'm tired and I'm making it the end of the world. So that's my answer to fatigue. It's it's a real thing, but try not to blow it. Try not to make it more than it actually is. If we're talking about tiredness, I'm just going to put in and just say sure, like, because sure. I messaged you the other day about how I've been feeling this week. Yes. So off topic for a second. Sure, off topic it is. But just like for the last week or so. I've been going to bed and not feeling tired. My eyes feel wide awake and I've been lying and not feeling like I've been getting much sleep. Hmm. And like we spoke about this before and like when you don't get enough sleep and you wake, you get up in the morning and you feel already sabotaged. But I've been waking up like for the last week and just feeling wide awake all the time. Okay. And I messaged you the other day just saying that I felt really calm for the last like three, four days. No like dizzy sensations, no tension, no nothing. But it's made me question and feel really weird that I'm not getting any of those sensations. So I'm almost concerned that I'm feeling nothing. And that's made me then become more tense. So like the last 24 hours, I felt it's really weird, but I felt normal. But normal being more tense, more anxious, more off balance. You know what I mean? So I had like three or four days where I just felt no symptoms. But that was weird for me. Strange. Hmm. So the... Okay, that, that yeah, I, and I get it. We we kind of went back and forth on that a little. Yeah, bit. yeah. And and that kind of feeds into the, fa- the fatigue becomes a normal state a little bit. Like yeah, yeah, the that's tired. Yeah, that's why I thought I should throw it out because yeah. it's like there's probably going to be other people that maybe go through that. Yeah. Where they maybe feel like you're getting on top of it, but then it becomes that becomes weird. That becomes strange because you're not used to feeling that almost freedom because that's how it felt yeah i was sitting watching tv like watching a movie yeah. and i was watching the movie i wasn't sitting there questioning and yes how do i feel like my eyes feel like whatever you know 
just odd, odd, I, well, but I, nice. And I said to you, should I just embrace the calmness? Yeah. And like, that's what you've got to do in it. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, we get in that situation where we get so vigilant about any change in state, any change yeah. in state. Mm, so mm. I, I'm tired, but now I'm not tired or I'm more tired than I was or I'm less tired than I was. Every change in state like seems mm. to be a problem for us. So yeah, yeah, yeah. There so, must be something wrong. That's what I was thinking. Uh, right. Because, there must be because wrong. I feel all right. There must be something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you're, when we're focused inward and we're constantly worried about how we feel and what we're thinking, then yes, every feeling, every sensation, good or bad becomes an issue. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. I have to think about this. Why do I feel yeah, so yeah. good today? Like, huh? <laughs> Uh, yeah it's a strange thing so anyway thank right. you laura for that question the question about fatigue hopefully we were able to answer it for whomever so i've got a comment i've got a comment You're from craft craft 163 i'm okay. just reading through it quickly i realize i'm facing a formidable opponent i can't really run away from that opponent is me time after time i experience that flash of panic terror i think this time i'm really gonna lose it or die become a babbling wreck sprinting screaming in tongues i can't quite get it or believe it isn't the real deal this time so it wasn't a question it was just a comment basically saying that when they get in that moment they can't they can't grasp the thing that this isn't it this it isn't the end so every time it happens for them they're going down that same route of thinking that this is going to be the end of them whatever it's going to be heart attack die go crazy yeah so what it what where's the switch what is it what what are we missing Okay. It's just a realization, isn't it? It is. That a there is no real danger. And, and and actually, this is funny. We'll combine two comments because then one I was going to do next is from okay. R. R. Brunner twenty one twelve. This is on YouTube. Do you have a theory as to why some people have panic attacks periodically? May even go to the ER, but after they are done with some bouts of panic, they are okay and they don't really think about it until the next one. Mm. Mm. And other people have a few panic attacks, then gad or agoraphobia sets in, and they're in a constant anxiety loop. So, very similar question. Very yeah, yeah. How come? Yeah. What's the point where you look at that panic attack and say, "Well, I've, I've had a hundred of these before. This is nothing," mm. or I just had a panic attack. I don't care. I had a panic attack. I'm just going to go out about my day, and maybe I'll have another one. Maybe I won't. I don't care. So, mm. why can some people make that mental leap and say, "I feel like I'm going insane right now, but I know I'm not, and so I'm going to move on." Yeah. And some people think, "No, this time I really am going insane." So I think we. We touched on it before saying maybe that it was down to experience for us. So unfortunately, we had to go through that process numerous times before we realized it. Yes. Because we there's no distinguishing factor that, you know, there wasn't a switch, was there? That's what we both said is. No. There was nothing for me that stopped me from calling an ambulance. Right. You know, and, and who's to say that one day I might have one that bad that I will. Yeah. But as it stands right now, like how many panic attacks I've had in the past that I can't count. But I've never reached that point, so I've always felt like I can sort of just get through it, yeah. ride it out. So I don't know whether there's whether there's something that I learned or whether it was just something that I accepted early on was just like, I will get over this. I'll get through it. This is a really tough question, I think, and there's no good mm-hmm. answer. But my answer yeah. to, to our friend R. Bruner on YouTube was literally started with, that's the million-dollar question. Yeah. Really, for people who mm. like us who deal with these sort of things, how come some people get that? Yeah. Some people don't. And I think if you're new to it, your first couple of panic attacks, you're not going to have the experience and you are going to kind of lose it a little bit. And that's normal. Mm. But some people, that light bulb goes off after panic attack number five. Some people, it takes a hundred of them. Some yeah. people, the light bulb never goes off. And mm. if I could answer why that is, I don't know. We wouldn't be doing I'd this. I have a much larger office than this. Yeah. Just so yeah. You know. <laughs> so I don't have an answer yeah. to that. But what what is it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But but I think it comes back to the thing we talk about a lot, and you know that that element of courage. So whether you're wondering why did I develop GAD or agoraphobia after two panic attacks, or your commenter is wondering why do I think every panic attack is the end of me. Mm-hmm. Both of those could be met with with that courage element that says, I'm just going to trust, take that leap of faith that Uh this is not the end of me, and I'm just going to close my eyes and relax and breathe and just let it happen. Let's have it. Yeah. And I think that's – it's sometimes there's either an unwillingness or or not knowing that that's what it's going to take that puts us into that loop that, that, you know, of thinking this one is the end or turning two panic attacks into agoraphobia within a month because it can happen. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. So. Well, my my next my next comment sort of leads into. Sure. Go for it. It just goes a bit deeper into that, and that this one's from Bella Donna. Okay. And she says she would love for us to talk about the trapped feeling when feeling when dealing with anxiety. So the one that the major struggle is sitting down, having a conversation, or waiting in line, or sitting with a group of friends at a dinner party, mm-hmm. constantly feeling trapped that they can't leave or get out of the situation. So that I would class that as like the agoraphobia sort of thing. It's the the trapped needing to escape always looking for escape or not having to know where the escape that was something that i used to do was just if we went out for dinner i'd have to sit as close to the exit you know or i'd just have to know where the exit was so that was a big thing for me right and so how do we deal with that that's that's a good topic actually that need to escape well the the way that i would suggest to deal with it now is to just it doesn't matter where the you know, sit as far away from the damn exit as you possibly bloody can. Right. That's the way to deal with it. That it is doesn't true. matter. That's it doesn't, true. It's, it's not something that you should think about, is it? It's easier said than done, but it's just not. It's a safety behavior at the end of the day. It, it is, because I, I think that, that feeling trapped means I have to find a way out of here. I cannot possibly sit and finish this conversation because yeah. I have to run. And the question is, run to, to what or run yeah. from what? So mm. you're the same, and I said this to a friend on the phone the other day. You are the very same person, whether you are sitting at a restaurant yes. in, a, in a long conversation with a friend and feeling panicky, as you are sitting on your sofa or in your car, wherever your safe place is. You're the same exact person. Yeah, you're in yeah. no more, no more or less danger. You are no more or less out of control. And I think getting past the trap pe- feeling means truly accepting that that is the truth. Like even if I just sit here yeah, yeah, with yeah. my friend Billy and have a panic attack, okay, I have a panic attack. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't I, matter whether I'm sitting here or there or it doesn't matter. I'm not escaping mm. anything in particular. So mm. feeling trapped feels like somehow rather you can get to a safer place. And the trick yeah. here is to understand that there is no safer place because you don't have to, there's nothing to be safe from. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's that's, my, that's my answer for yeah, feeling yeah. trapped. I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, no. yeah. I'll stick with that. You're not trapped in anything, you know. So. That's it. I mean, that's you might it. be in a really it's... boring conversation, but you know, yeah. and nobody wants to wait online to renew their driver's license. But that's mm. no fun. Mm. But but I understand that that incredible need to bolt out. I get that. I understand that. Well, that that is the that is part of the problem, isn't it? That is that that is the disorder or yes. part of it. It is. It is. Yeah. And it, it makes me think, I, I'm guessing the video isn't there anymore. It's a, a mutual friend of ours, also in the UK. I won't mention her name, but she was doing videos back when you and I first met. And I remember seeing a video where she was out walking. And she that moment, like it, the realization of how far she was from her home. And it was at night. Yeah. Yeah. And she literally like, bam, you could see her eyes change. And in a second, mm-hmm. her demeanor changed. And she literally, and I remember the first time I ever heard the term leg it. <laughs> I feel the need to leg it, which in the U.S. we'd say we need to run, <laughs> right? I need to ball yeah, to yeah. run. Yeah. I just want to leg it. And she literally ran. And the, and the last bit of the video was her running back to her home where her, mm-hmm. then her mm-hmm. fiance was. Mm-hmm. And I wish sometimes I, I, I wish people could watch that because you could see it. And that's how quick. Yes. And then I remember she got home and she felt better when she got home. And then the realization of like, well, that I know I feel silly. Like mm. it was, it's a perfect illustration of that, that trapped feeling. That, that's that moment. Yes. That's that moment. Yes. Mm. Yeah. With, with, it just, it hit her and she, she started running and then felt mm. silly for having ran after she did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's the deal of being trapped. I think, um, I would agree with that. Yeah. So let me look at this. Um, I have another one here. This is a, a, a question. This is good on, on YouTube from Evil Morty. This is just a good name. Nice. <laughs> Evil Morty. Um, he had, it, it's, it's, it's a question about tension. He has a specific feeling of tension in his, in his head and in his neck. Um, mm-hmm. and, and it's problematic for him. And so he wants to know, how do you deal with that constant tension? Is this is something really wrong? Or is this just that I'm not relaxing? Um, and, and that's a common question that I get all the time too. People, how come my neck hurts all the time? How come my head hurts all the time? How come my shoulders are sore? sore? How come my, my mm-hmm. abs are sore? Um, and I think you know, we could talk a little bit about tension, keeping tension. Well, I mean, about, yeah, 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 I do get it. I do get it quite often. And I, when I was doing the 31 Days of May videos, I think for like the first week or week and a half, right. I was having real horrible pains in the back of my head. 
and I, you know, I was questioning, is this just tension and, or is there something more sinister? Sure. But I just, the, the way that I honestly dealt with it was to just let time pass. I'm not saying that I tried to forget about it because it was there and it was bothering me, but I just knew that I'm just going to let time pass. And it right. did start to ease and it, you know, gradually because I was videoing myself every day, I was mentioning it. So I was keeping it in my mind, I guess that probably didn't help. But during the course of like a week and a half, it just eased and then I noticed that I woke up one day and it had just gone. So allowing time to pass for stuff like that, that what's what that is what worked for me. Yeah. But there's time there's times where I can be sat like if I'm working at the computer and I'll feel that my shoulders are well tense. But then I'll just sort of maybe take a moment, a couple of minutes to just drop. To just let everything drop. And yeah. there's a feeling like you can just let everything go yep. and it's quite a nice relaxed feeling so i guess if you can just switch maybe bring your focus to that every now and again yeah you know maybe every hour or something people stick certain things up like on their refrigerator maybe or up on their cupboard a little dot that'll just remind them to do something right so maybe if you did that you know if you're struggling with tension mm -hmm. throughout the course of a few days stick a dot somewhere and every time you look at it just remember to just drop your shoulders sure. just let everything go yep you know, maybe that would condition yourself to maybe do that more often so you don't have to look for a sticker. You can just, you just do it. it's just there, that response to just recognize when you're holding yourself, you know. Yeah, that's a good point because I think breathing and, and tension in the body, you know, we talk about trying to just ignore our symptoms, like don't pay them any mind. Yeah, yeah. But those are two that probably make sense to keep coming back to. Like, yeah, like you yeah. said, you know, you look for that Good tension point. every yeah, hour yeah. or so. So when you're feeling tension or even the breathing thing, you know, I have a tendency to hold my mm. breath when I'm in a stressful yeah. situation. You know, uh, there are even apps you can put on your phone that will remind yeah. you every 15 minutes, you know, stretch your neck, get up, move around. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not a bad thing to go back and look for that tension mm. and release it and release it. It's a good point, though. It's a good point that we say try and divert or just don't think about, don't your, think about your symptoms. But, but this yeah. is one. Like you say, it is. Yeah. You should. But Try the, and relax your shoulders. Yes, I think the difference is you might scan yourself for tension and, and holding your breath, but not because you're worried that the tension is some sort of physical malady, like something is wrong. Mm. Just you have to understand, like, oh, wait a minute, why are my shoulders up here? I used to do that all the time. Yeah, yeah. I would have my shoulders Yeah, up. yeah, same. Um, I do. Yeah, and I'd have to remind myself of that. And so scanning for a little bit of tension or just noticing, like, am I breathing right now? Like, why do I feel mm. a little bit dizzy? Like, oh, well, because I'm taking one breath every four minutes. That's not okay, you know? <laughs> so... Yeah, that's the tension thing is tough. It's very normal, you know, to hold the tension somewhere in your body. I actually had a mm. friend of mine who his feet used to hurt all the time because right. he used to clench his toes in his shoes. Mm -hmm. That was his mm -hmm. way of doing it. So he'd get foot cramps. But right. it's a very normal thing. And, and scanning for it and learning to let it go is not a bad thing. Use an app. That's there it. are devices. There's a little device that I've seen. I've never used it. You clip it on your belt or like right. on your pants or some women will like clip it in their shirt. And on a timer, it works with an app. And I, I believe you can't, you can't say pants. Not we've got a UK audience. That's true. You can't say pants. I know this too. <laughs> Trousers. What is that? What yes. do you guys? Do? Yes, yes. There you go. See, I'm an honorary Brit. I'm, I'm working for that. I need my honorary degree in British slang. Um, yes. So you, you clip it in your trousers or your pants or whatever or somewhere in your body. <laughs> it has a heart rate sensor, and I guess it's kind of trying to sense your respiration. And when it senses yeah, tension yeah. or it senses that your breathing has become you know held, it will vibrate a little and just remind mm -hmm. you like, hello, breathe. So hello. I'm not, I'm not no. No. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not talking to you now. So that that's the te that's the tension thing. Um, Just wait for it to stop. Yeah, sure, we can wait. I'll edit. I'll edit that bit. <laughs> it's all right. Balls, bollocks. <laughs> you have a very quick. I say I think we should leave it. We should we should totally not edit this out. Comic relief. Wow. This is the way it goes. This is this okay. is this is the way it goes. When we well, do if this. we're, jeez, wow, I just saw. <laughs> If we're sticking with the symptoms, then my next comment was, yes. please, from Cindy Stevens, please could you address the off-balance feeling or, or the ground-moving sensation, which is something that I've struggled, I've struggled with in the past, and I still get it now. I'm just, I'm actually going to say on this podcast that I don't struggle with it now because I just sort of just, it's just there. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. And I know the ground isn't moving, and I, I may be swaying a little, but I think that's because I'm so aware of every movement every motion 
you know, it, maybe I'm sitting watching TV and I'm, I might just move a couple, an inch to the left, but I'll feel it, I'll see it, and I'll see stuff moving in my peripheral vision and that. Yep. But I, I know that that's what it is now. So that's it's just the rea- reality of. I know that I am moving. The ground is not moving. Yes. It must be me. And there is no problem. Yeah, you're 100 percent right. I think it's perfectly normal. Like when we we to get a little off balance, like that's sort of normal. If you're feeling anxiety, you'll get you'll have a little bit of balance and orientation problems. That's part mm-hmm. of what adrenaline does to us. So, you know, just accepting like, all right, so maybe I'm a little bit off balance right now, but okay. Like, I mean, I've I've stood in a like in a shop queue when I have before, yeah. And I like stood behind somebody, and you can see that there, you know, there's a slight bit of movement. They're not standing perfectly still, right? It's just that they're not standing there thinking, "Whoa, is it me that's moving? Is it the floor? What the hell's going on?" You know, they're just standing there, right? They're having the, the same motion that we are. It's just that because we're so fixed on everything, noticing everything, yes. That's the only reason that we even pick up on it. It feels worse. That is, mm. I, I believe you to be 100% true on that. So mm. one of the, and again, I have no research on this. this. is my own framework that I work in. But even when you hit depersonalization and derealization, I have come to look at those things as just temporary states where like background processing comes to the front. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I don't want to talk about that now necessarily, but even the, even when you're feeling that off balance or unsteady thing, like you said, where there's always some sort of movement and, like, you don't even know how many calculations per second your brain has to do to keep the human body yeah. straight and upright. There's a lot of balance that goes on here. There's a lot of mm. muscle control happening. And we don't ever think about it. We just walk. Like, mm. our, our, our brains just do it for us. We walk. We stand upright. We don't just tip over because we don't. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. when we become aware of that processing and we become aware of the change, like, oh, my thigh just changed a little bit. So I leaned a little bit. We're suddenly aware of the things that the people around us are completely oblivious to. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it's the same exact state that a normal person is in, just that we notice it. And that's and, it. And it makes us crazy. So, mm. Uh, mm. yeah, that's the off balance. Just be off balance. Go ahead. You're not off balance. So, yeah, this is one of those sensations that you should just not pay much attention to doesn't matter don't, don't walking, be concerned the I tell ground people, is yes yeah yeah and i tell people all the time unless you have literally fallen down unless you have actually fallen down you know mm. multiple times and then we have to look at that but in, unless you have been face down on the ground several times what mm-hmm. being worried that you might fall down mm. sooner or later you have to stop worrying because you haven't fallen down so, i knew that the comments were going to take this sort of direction it's going to be symptoms symptoms because people are so bloody focused on them that's the thing yes but it's hard not to be it is hard not to be but that's what i've noticed because in the past like i feel myself i'm going to talk about myself that's all right right. like i think i suffer with social anxiety because i don't like talking to people full stop you're all right i guess (laughs) (laughs) agoraphobia because i just don't go anywhere i don't like feeling trapped i don't like going in shops whatever health anxiety because i'm constantly questioning how i feel so i feel like i'm sort of and i've always like struggled to come to terms with how do you like the one thing for me was health anxiety because i've always known that for agoraphobia really it's exposure therapy you've got to get out there and you've got to do it Social anxiety is pretty much the same. You've got to get out. You've got to talk to people, you know, picking up the phone, whatever it is that you need to do. But what can you do for health anxiety? That's always something that's struggled. I've struggled to sort of understand. But I think recently it's like it's coming to terms with symptoms and sensations, isn't it? That's it's just not giving them the attention that they're craving. Right. You know, that's the way to deal with health anxiety is to not take that sudden sharp pain that's not a heart attack that's you know that's what i'm sort of gaining from this is like that's how to deal with that so i'm kind of struggling and trying to put everything together that's where i'm at at the moment it's like i don't know what this has got to do with anything no 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 i (laughs) like it's because people maybe like the when you read these books and that those seem to be targeted this is the way to fix anxiety yes but there is so many different things and that's what i've always really struggled with like i did exposure therapy and i was getting out but it didn't explain to me how i could deal with sensations or symptoms and worrying about my health and stuff like that yeah so i've i've kind of come to the realization that there's different methods to attack different conditions yeah 
That's true. And and any of the comments that uh, about specific symptoms. Know. No, no, I think it's a really good comment because mm. it applies to almost every question we'll ever get about a specific symptoms. A headache, mm. shortness of breath, dizziness, unsteadiness, whatever it happens to be, what you just said is 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 the way to address every one of them. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it. Every one so of them. Pretty, you would think that everybody that's questioning a symptom, that's like a health anxiety because really their fear, they're scared that this is something more sinister, isn't it? So it is yes. health anxiety at the end of the day. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I, I actually yeah. had a question this morning, and I'm going to do two in a row if you don't mind, but I had somebody who actually asked me a question this morning, like how do you deal with being worried about a specific um, – she says, what if there's a root fear of a specific disease? Like, okay. you know, so that sort of health anxiety. And, you know, my answer to that was it depends. Do you actually have the disease and you're worried about the fact that you have it? Or are you just mm -hmm. worried about possibly getting it? Um, and I think in the end, when we're worried about the twinge in our chest or the feeling dizzy or the maybe unsteady or the, the pain in your leg or whatever it is, like you said, it is health anxiety in the end if you boil it all down because you think mm -hmm. that something might be really wrong. And some people will just take it to a bigger degree. So... If your legs hurt, some of us might think, well, this is an indicator that something is wrong with me right now. There's some event happening right yeah. now that I need to be yeah. afraid of. And some people will say there might be something happening to me right now that requires medical attention. Or this could be an indicator that I have developed some sort of horrible disease that will kill me down the road in some terrible mm -hmm. way. So in the end, it's all the same. It's, and, and not to sound to oversimplify it, but until you have evidence that something really is wrong – then mm. you can choose to worry about what might happen or you could just keep doing what you're doing. And if it happens, then deal with it. But if mm -hmm. it doesn't happen, worrying about it won't stop it from happening anyway. Like yeah, yeah. worrying about, you know, cancer is a terrible thing, but worrying about cancer never stopped anybody from getting it. Mm. So, and that's it. Yeah. People do convince themselves that something is seriously wrong. Yes. So they, they actually, it, it's like it becomes that real, doesn't it? That's the, it does. And I think that this is where the cognitive part of cognitive behavior therapy comes in where, and I know I talk about it all the time and people are probably tired of me hearing about it. when you learn those skills where you could say, well, this is bothering me because I, I keep thinking that I have, and in fact, I, there are some people who might be listening that would understand alien ear cancer, which became a joke among a couple of friends of mine. Right. You know, I, I'm convinced that I have this particular disease or I'm worried I'm going to get this disease. Well, you know, there are skills you can learn to stop that thought, to mm -hmm. understand it, to challenge it, to take it to its logical conclusion, to prove it to be false, and to yeah. replace it with a different thought. But it's it's mm -hmm. a skill like learning to speak a language. You have to work on it. You have to be taught it, and you have to learn it. So mm -hmm. you can overcome all of those things, from the unsteadiness to the the fear that you have a disease. It's, it's it. possible to get past all of that stuff. Now, the, the other comment I wanted to throw out so we get off the symptom thing for just a second is I had a con. This is from Rihanna. It was a while ago. What, she, the Rihanna? The Rihanna. I don't think it was the Rihanna, but maybe. Who knows? Rihanna Jade on YouTube. Mm -hmm. My boyfriend is my massive safety behavior. I can't go out without him. Do you have any tips, help tips to get over that? I think this is also a very common thing for people in our situation. And that goes back to the I can do anything as long as. Yeah, I yeah, definitely. Anything as long definitely. as my boyfriend is with me or my wife mm. is with me or whatever. How do you get past that? Well, so, I mean, I I feel way more comfortable if my wife is there. So sure. you should answer this. I'm going to answer that. <laughs> okay. So what I told Rihanna Jade, our friend Rihanna, was uh, ask yourself exactly what your boyfriend, in her case, is saving you from. Like, mm -hmm. and, and in your case, you know, what is what is your wife actually saving you from? You know, let's follow that through to its logical conclusion. So you feel more comfortable with well, Taryn, and what what is she saving you from? Yeah, it's, it's just making life easier, isn't it? Like if we're maybe going to a shop and she's doing the checkout bit, then it's saving me from having to do that. Yeah. So that's oh, uh, saving me from nothing. It's just making it easier so I don't have to okay. be uncomfortable. So I think that's a different thing. So for you, she's she can actually do the task that you would prefer not to do because it's uncomfortable yes. for you. Yes. As opposed to feeling like she is literally going to save you from some horrible fate. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Mm. I, I'll I'll fill you in. And you know what? Sometimes I say things that seem so funny to me because and that things that 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 were like this for me many 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 years ago when I was at my worst. Mm -hmm. Even before you and I met, I can remember literally like thinking being home alone in, in a house in my house at the time. 
and being worried that something would happen. I'd have a heart attack or a stroke or something where I would need medical attention mm -hmm. and literally wondering, this is no joke. <laughs> this is, this is true. It's a joke now, but I would literally wonder if my dog would be able to save me. So I understand mm -hmm. how real these thoughts can be mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. feeling the need to be saved from something. So it depends. Are you using the safety person as, some, as a shield against the uncomfortable tasks? Or do you honestly think that they are literally yeah. going to save your life somehow? Is it somebody? Is it having somebody there to call nine one one? Exactly. Is that That's what it's exactly about? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, and I think it depends. You have to really look at what is your safe person say. What do you think they're saving you from? Mm. And you have to follow that thought all the way through to its logical conclusion and learn to unmask it and understand that whether that person is there or not, unless you were to get hit by a car and need to call nine one one, he or she is not actually saving you from anything because there's nothing that you need to be saved from yeah yeah mm. and it's it's a bro broken record i say it over and over and over but i think that's the answer to that that's how you yeah, get over needing a safe up, person Kurt. shut up <laughs> so i think that's the answer to safe person they're not oh, saving dear. you from anything so i don't know okay go ahead up to you i got one you got one okay this is a long uh, video by the way i know yeah this is from tanya amat Hey, does anybody get really anxious about starting antidepressants? So we're sort of on the medication thing, but it's a big thing for me, like even considering taking not just antidepressants, because I've never actually taken them, but any medication, like for me, paracetamol, my headache has to be off the charts okay. for me to take paracetamol. I won't take ibuprofen. I don't know why. I just won't. Like I take propranolol now, but it took me so long to build up the courage to actually take it. Yep. And now I'm in the position, like I'm in the opposite scale now. I'm too scared to stop taking the bloody things. Okay. So, you know, does anybody get really anxious about starting antidepressants? I think people get anxious about taking medication full stop. Yes. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. I, I have dealt with many, many people who get prescribed medication by various types of doctors who are never take them. They're just afraid to mm. take them. And mm. they want – and forget the judgment on medication aside. People who, who feel like this will help me, I want the help from this, but I mm. can't bring myself to take it. It always, to me, comes back down to being afraid to anything that may cause a change in your body, anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I went for a long time too. I wouldn't even take aspirin. If I had a headache, I would not take you know ibuprofen for the headache. I would just let it yeah. be there. And, mm. and I still do that. It's just a bad habit that I've, just, I've kind of got, got myself into, I think, of just being mm -hmm. stubborn. Um, but being afraid of anything that might change my mental or physical state, anything. Mm. And, and that mm. extends to alcohol and, and other drugs, recreational drugs. So yeah, yeah. I think the worry about taking medication is anything that might like, it's gonna make me feel different. Like it might make me feel better, but it might make me feel worse. Yeah. And I can't yeah. have anything that's going to change the way I feel. I at think all. perhaps one thing is like, don't read the side effect label. Oh. Yeah, the documentation, a, because they have to put that stuff on there. I mean, even if there's only one person that's experienced something, yeah, they have to disclose it, don't they? So when you start reading like that, it's going to make you feel worse within the first couple of weeks, and you could get a rash, or you could, you know, breathing difficulties, all those kind of things. But I, I can't remember who it was, but somebody once said that if they listed all the side effects that people have experienced from paracetamol, yeah, the box wouldn't be that big to contain your <laughs> freaking tablets. Yeah. You know? It would come with a book. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's a tough one, too, because doctors will – I've heard this debated. A lot of doctors don't even want to tell you the side effects. Now, yeah. you kind of – from an ethical standpoint, you have to. You need that informed consent, right? So mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. end, it's up to you to make that decision. Your doctor needs to give you all the information you need to make informed consent about your health care choices. But – Many doctors will argue, and I understand their point, like we don't want to tell people what the potential side effects are because then we can deal with noncompliance. So I'm giving you this medication yeah. because I believe yeah. it's, it will help you, but you won't take it because you read the, you read the side of the box and mm -hmm. now you're convinced that you're going to have all those side effects. So it's very difficult. I don't know how to answer this question other than, again. Well, the question, was, the question was, does anybody get really anxious? The answer is yes. Yes, many, many people have medication. We don't know why. Well, we, I, think, I think we know why, and I think the reason is because we're afraid of anything that might change our state. You're afraid yeah, that that's it might make you feel worse. Like, that's what it, it, yeah, what yeah. It, and it could be anything as simple as, like, what if it gives me a headache? I don't want a headache. To mm -hmm. what if it makes my anxiety even worse? Mm -hmm. Or what if it causes what if I a gain weight? clot? What if I gain weight? What if I have sexual side effects? And, mm -hmm. and the, side, the side effects of SSRIs, uh, any neurotransmitter reuptake inhibitor are pretty well documented now because they've been around a long time. And 
some of them don't sound so great. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I know men that have avoided taking them because of the sexual side effects. Mm -hmm. and they, they, but again, in any medication, there's a any medication has a risk. Every single medication has some small element of risk, yeah. no matter how tiny it is, versus the reward. So, mm -hmm. I could tell you that every once in a while I'll have like skipped heartbeats, especially if I get tired. Yeah, yeah. I know I've talked about this. Completely benign, totally safe. And at one point, my doctor said, because they used to really freak me out. He said, well, I can give you like propanol. You got you have that, right? It's a beta, yeah, yeah. It's a beta blocker. So I, can yeah. get, I can give you that. It, and I said, well, what will it do? He said, well, it won't stop them. It'll just sort, sort of take the twist out of them so you don't feel them as much. Mm -hmm. And that was a really good illustration to me of like, what's the risk versus what's the reward? And I said, no, it's yeah, okay. Yeah. If it's not going to stop them anyway, who cares? So, yeah, I wish, I'd, I wish I'd never started taking mine. So now the fear up. is stopping it. Yeah, yeah, because I don't want to alter my state. Right, you're afraid of what that might be. Yeah, yeah. And there's yeah, probably it's, something it's, it's in spot you. On. Yeah, there's something in you that still somehow is thinking that that medication is still protecting you in some way. It's a shield. Mm. No, you know. I just don't. I don't know. Do I don't want to find out. I don't want to find out. Right. I don't want to find out. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I can remember taking my very, very last antidepressant and wondering that, like, wow, it's been like nine years without like a shield. How is this going to go? Mm. And it was scary. Mm. So. I mean, it was kind of similar to stopping smoking, really, just not knowing how I was going to feel. You know, I'd read forums of people that had yeah. gained weight sure. or, you know, sore throats, coughs and all kinds of stuff. But none, that, of that, none of it happened. Yeah, but in that case, like the known positive benefits of not smoking outweighed that and you did it. Well, people weren't posting them on bloody forums. That's the problem, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it's nothinghappened.com. You know? can register that as soon as we get done. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, all I've right. Got so, one. I've got another one again. from Bella Donna. And this was on the video that we did when we were talking about how many people are aware or talking about anxiety and mental health. And that was, do we have an opinion on why in 2017 there's so many more cases of anxiety, panic attacks, mental illness than there was 50 years ago? Um, her parents tell her that it wasn't nearly as bad as it was now, or as it is now, sorry. I think we touched on this. We said that maybe social media has a big part to play in it, and, well, not just social media, media as a whole, you know, TV, movies. There's a lot of talk about it. There's yes. a lot of people that are coming out. I suppose there's more ways to see people talking about it. That's what Yes. I was thinking it was probably the way. I agree with that too. I don't, I don't know if it's any more prevalent than it ever was. Yeah. Just just that now you can hear about it more. That's so, it. I mean, perhaps like, I don't know how far going back, but the only people that you would really talk to are the people in your community. Yep, your you family. Know, you'd maybe hear something on the radio. Yeah. Or if you went traveling, maybe you'd meet a few more people, but probably the majority of people were quite closely yes you know that's I think, what i'm thinking i think so too i think now we just have a, a much easier time finding other people who have the problem and so it seems like m many people do have the problem that's not a that's, yeah, yeah that's not news with what's news it's a surprise when you find out like how many people do deal with this mm. the other mm. thing is i think and we talked about this too we made our little comment about beauty bloggers which is probably disparaging more than it needed to be but what's funny the watering down the watering down yes the watering down of anxiety in a way is a real thing we can probably talk about that for five podcasts but mm. the word anxiety has become used to describe so many things and, and, and it's true it's valid i can't say it's not accurate to use the word anxiety mm. in many cases but when we use the word anxiety in this podcast and these videos and the people who are generally watching us understand that we're talking about a whole different animal there's a I think you you said it best is when it becomes the disorder when you modify your lifestyle correct to accommodate the anxiety that's what we're sort of we're talking about people that can't live a normal life right. because a lot of the a lot of the videos that I've seen like people are they're saying that they suffer with anxiety but they're out in the middle of the city center surrounded by people or doing whatever driving around in Lamborghinis like you said last week you know <laughs> And that, yes, that's, we're not saying that they're not suffering with anxiety. It's just that perhaps we're leaning towards people that can't do those things, that don't live a normal life. They're not free to fulfill whatever dreams yes. or desires that they have. That's how I see it. When, when your lifestyle starts to be modified, I think that's what mm. we're talking about. And, and anxiety takes, takes many forms. And, and here in the U.S., we've, 
Oh, I mean, you guys went through the whole Brexit thing. That was probably a big deal in the UK. Um, and we, you know, in our last election in November and Donald Trump becomes our president, I have heard mm-hmm. the word anxiety more than I ever have in my yeah, life yeah. since then. And people who are just riddled with anxiety because because he's the president now. And like, all right, I understand. I've seen, yeah, I've I, seen so many posts. Yeah, I mean, I get it. But I think we're, we're seeing a little bit for folks like us, a little bit of the watering down of the word anxiety. So I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know if people have it any more or less. I, and you know what? I think people have more. I, I will say this to answer that question. Probably could answer this in one sentence. There probably is more, more anxiety. If you take anxiety in the textbook definition, there probably is more because everywhere you turn now, and I was actually Stress. talking about this last night. You can see something online, on the television, wherever that can stress you out. Mm. You know, mm. the in- environmental concerns, economic concerns, political terrorism, diseases, you know, the yeah. breakdown of social structure, whatever it is that's going to freak you out. You can find that in 30 seconds on your mm-hmm. phone or, or your computer. So there probably is more anxiety if you take the textbook example. But I don't know if more people suffer from anxiety disorders than ever have. Yeah, yeah, Probably more people point. feel anxious, but I don't know if, if our issue is any more prevalent than it has ever mm, been. Mm, so good that, point. Yeah, that would be my answer for that. We'll keep that one. Yeah, we'll keep that one. There you go. Um, so other – you want to take a few more here? We're, we're going to push an hour on this one. Yeah, go for it. All right, so let's see here. Um, there was another one that I wanted to go to, and now I cannot find it. Where is it here? <clears throat> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That was the fatigue thing. We went over that. Oh, Belladonna's been on my channel too. She's busy. Okay. Here's another one about safety behaviors and distractions. This okay. is Jenny, Jenny Wicker, Jenny Wickerham. Uh, my safety behavior is watching Netflix or checking Instagram to distract from anxious feelings or sensations, which isn't really a question, more of a comment. Um, and I think it's worth mentioning that my response to Jenny was that you can actually turn those things into positive things. Mm-hmm. So the key word is distraction. Um, and I think if you find that you are using a device, your phone, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Netflix, whatever it is, to distract you from your anxiety, what I mentioned to her is it, if you see that and you know you do that already, it gives you something to work on. Mm-hmm. And this holds true for almost anything, a safety behavior or a ritual that you're going through. If you know it enough that you can actually write a comment to us about it, then that gives yeah, you yeah. actually something you now have homework to do. So it's funny you mentioned that because the comment that I was just looking at on mine was how would I stop my nervous habit of sniffing my nose or clearing my throat? Sure. But exactly the same principle. If you recognize that it's a nervous habit then right. you can begin, you know, because you're going to know when you're going to do that. Yes. So just try if you can bring your awareness just before. Yep. Just try not to do it. And I think the key here is you can actually use that to, to jump forward a little bit. So mm-hmm. in the case of this particular person, she uses uh, checking Instagram to distract when she gets anxious. And so mm-hmm. instead of picking up the phone and going to Instagram, just don't do it for 30 seconds. Next time you're going to pick that up. Or next time you feel like <clears throat> you need to do that throat clearing thing, just don't. Just hold, and see what happens. Literally hold off for 30 seconds. Mm. You don't have to just stop doing it forever because you can't break a habit that easily. It's, yeah, yeah. You know, well, that's just the way we are. But mm. just give yourself 30 seconds. Stop, put the phone down, or don't clear your throat. Count to 10, even mm-hmm. if you can. And, and understand, like, well, I didn't clear my throat, or I didn't look at Instagram, and I'm still here. Nothing is, yeah, yeah, nothing that's is it. different. That's it. Yeah, so that was my comment on distractions. Like, if you, can, if you know them, then you can actually work on – on using yeah, them yeah. To Recog- recognizing it, recognizing them is the starting point, isn't it? Yeah, don't don't you know if you don't do it and see that you're still fine, then mm. that that is a good way to start that first step of kind of exposure in a well. In a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's that one. Are you got another one you want to throw out before we start to maybe wrap it up? Who me? Oh. I haven't. No, oh. I'm done. Well, good. I, th- I think we're all good too. Because oh, the other one that I want to throw out before we wrap it up. Since we did our and, and I think you – I haven't published it yet. I'll put it up on mine. Anyway, by the time you watch this, it will be up, so it doesn't matter. I forget we're delayed. <laughs> <laughs> um, the question about what uh, – we talked about therapy and professional help and the different types of programs that are out there. Okay. Uh, we may have specifically mentioned like the Linden Method and things like that. I, I am getting a lot of questions. We didn't, Did we, we didn't not? mention names. Well, good. All right, well, I'll send you the name of my lawyer because we're probably going to need it now. Um, the, I have gotten many questions over time about specific programs, and people ask me, "Do you have you ever heard of this program? Have you ever heard of that program? Have you ever, you know, what do you think of this one? What do you think of that one?" 
And I, I, we won't name names, I guess. We don't, <laughs> exactly. we don't want to wind up in broil shape. We want, maybe we should edit that out. I don't know. I mean, you know how that goes. You've been there. But, um, Do you want me to swear? Remember that? No. <laughs> I think the question I get asked all the time about different programs, the, the, the answer, and you can throw this in anytime you want to, but my answer to that is always the same. Like, I mean, fine. If you feel like you need to give somebody a couple of bucks to help you get down the road, that, that's an individual choice. I don't say that that's mm. that's inherently wrong to do that but i do believe that it's doable on on your own you can mm-hmm. do it on your own you don't need a program to tell you what to do like everything we've said in the last however many episodes of this we've done you know and everything you've said on your channel the things i've said on my channel with holly and, and a million other places where you can find people like us talking yeah, about yeah. this stuff is, is the roadmap mm. you need but if you feel like you need a little more structure there's nothing wrong with that what i always say is if the program if the program tells you that your anxiety is going to go away quickly or mm-hmm. it's going to cure you or that there's the easy way, the easy way or that there's some here's something you never would have thought of that will fix your anxiety. Or if it's focused on something that you eat, drink, sniff or rub on your skin, mm-hmm. run. That's my own. But that's my own opinion. I, I think it's that becomes a waste of, of money and time. There's one at the moment, sorry, this isn't, yeah. I don't know if this is paid for, but it's like, it's an advert on YouTube, so when you go to watch a video, I've seen it on mine before, Okay. at the, at the very start when the advert comes on, it says, you're not going to find the answers to panic attacks here on YouTube, and then if you watch the advert for a bit longer, he ends up saying, watch our videos on YouTube yeah. to figure out how to end your panic attacks, so he started by saying, you're not going to find the answers to panic on YouTube and then, yeah, but watch our videos on panic on (laughs) On YouTube. YouTube, (laughs) Well, you know what, Mark, it's businesses are businesses. I own a business. I get it. I'm okay with it. (laughs) I mean, I'm a capitalist. I'm really okay with that, that somebody wants to turn this into a business. Okay. Uh, They have every right to do that. At least in the West they do. Well, if they've got customers, then yeah, that's fine. And you know what, if they're actually helping people, I'm okay with that too. Whatever helps in the end, I'm fine with, but, my blanket answer to what about this program or what about that program is be careful of anybody that tells you they're going to end your panic attacks because that's not really the goal. That's the That will be the result, but the goal is to not care if you have a panic attack anymore. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. think that might be the difference in my approach. And I think the underlying approach of people like Claire Weeks that I am such a huge fan of that I talk about all the time. Mm-hmm. just don't care. So your goal is to not ever care if you have a panic attack or not. Not to end them. They don't need to be ended. You just have to not care if you have them again. And, yeah, yeah. and the result might be the same. Once you aren't afraid anymore, you will probably stop having them so frequently. But that's not the goal. So look at the goal of the program you're about to spend your money on. And if they're telling you they're going to stop your panic attacks or end them or teach you how to stop them dead in their tracks, then to yeah, me, yeah. you are just putting a Band-Aid on it and spending money on something well, that might not be worth it. If you think about it, like if you do that, if you do one of these that say they'll stop them and you do have one, right. then you're automatically going to think that it's failed. The program's failed. Right. It which didn't work. I suppose it really has failed because it told you that it was going to stop them. Sure. So that can be really demoralizing, I guess. You know, you've gone through this whole damn program, spent whatever you've spent, yeah. and you've just had a panic attack after six months, and they said that you were never going to have one again. You know, and then you feel whereas, whether, whether you feel the program failed or you feel like you wasted your money or you just feel defeated. That's, yeah, that's, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, yeah. you feel like you have, maybe you haven't done it right. Or... Right, right. And I, I think if you if you've have the right goal in mind, you can still have that panic attack six months down the road, but it'll be an isolated incident in your life that may upset mm-hmm. you for the afternoon. But then tomorrow you'll just go right back to where you were and living life mm-hmm. and being happy again. So yeah, yeah. goals, it's all about goals and expectations in these programs. And that's my advice. And just, I'm just a big fan of like, just, I'm not a fan of anything that tells you to, to eat specific things or drink specific things or rub mm-hmm. things on your skin or sniff things. Like I just, this is not a physical thing. I'm sorry. It's just in my world, it's not. It, it expresses itself physically, but when you yes. think about what you can eat or swallow, whatever, you're just dampening the symptoms. That doesn't mm-hmm. actually fix mm-hmm. the problem. So that's my answer to different programs. My apologies to those of you publishing different programs. Okay. <laughs> no, no apologies. Sorry. I take it back. I don't apologize. No, definitely. I agree. I agree. <laughs> so screw them. Um, all right, I get to, we've probably gone long enough here. How long are we going? We're you're yapping for about an hour. This is I've got one the one one comment that I picked up. Yeah, bring out. it. Bring it. Yeah. Uh, Leo L T B 
these videos need way more views. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right, Leo. I'm with, I'm with Leo, yeah. <laughs> um, that's true. I, we should, you know, like I said, I'm the worst YouTuber ever. I never ask people to subscribe yeah, or like yeah. or anything, but you know but what? The good, thing is, the good thing is that the feedback that we've had has been 99.9% .9 positive. And see, I've had a couple of dislikes on the videos, but that's because people just like disliking videos. Yeah. But, you know, all the comments have been positive, so that's... I think so it too. makes it worthwhile, don't it? You yeah. know? Yeah. And I honestly, for me, whether a hundred people watch or 50 people watch or 10,000 people watch, um, you know what, if it, if it helps a couple of people, then I'm good with it. Yeah, that's it. I don't, I don't need that get, many views, but thank you, Leo. You <laughs> thank you, yeah. Leo. Um, and I agree. how about one more that I'll throw in? I did get a couple of people who said, should we talk about this? Nah, we'll talk about yeah. it offline and then we'll decide whether or not we want to do it. Oh, go on. We can cut it out. We can always to. cut it out. We're going to edit. <laughs> I like to do these unedited, but. I'll leave that bit in just so people are like, oh, like, damn, What was he going to say? What was he going to say? <laughs> nah, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Oh, come on. No, okay, ready? So here's yep. here's one. I did get two comments on this because a few weeks ago, I've had a bunch of people say, why don't you do this? So I did it and I monetized my YouTube video. So yes, <laughs> if you're watching on my channel, you might see an ad before the video. Feel free to skip the ad. I'm I not guess. watching it again. That is said, it. Uh, see, I just lost Billy. I'm screwed. Um, no, but the point with that is that you're not costing anybody that suffers with anxiety a penny. No. You're costing some tycoon sitting in an office maybe a pound, a dollar. Right, or less, who knows. Yeah, way less. And I guess it's one of those things where I, I've had people who have been generous, generous enough to want to send money or want to know if I have Patreon or any of those things. I don't. Um, but you know what? If... In the end, this is an hour on a Wednesday morning in New York that you and I mm -hmm. have spent. I, I like doing this. I enjoy doing it with you. Same. So good I fun. have no problem with this. It's fun. It's, 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 it makes me feel good to do these things. But it is an hour. I have an office full of people outside the door waiting to hear from me. But So in a way, if there's – you know what? If it makes a couple of bucks and I could buy the guy's pizza one day or whatever, you know. I don't know, whatever it is, or I'll, I'll take the money and donate it to something. I don't care, but there, I guess there, that's somebody said, well, why did you do that? You know, that's, that cheapens it. Oh, right? people actually commented and asked why you'd monetize. I had two people uh, on Facebook send me messages and ask oh, really? me, you know, why are there ads on your videos now? So, I mean, and, you well, know, my, I'll just throw this out there. I do have a Patreon, <laughs> but you don't have to pay into it. It's not, I'm not using, I'm not spending more time if there's more on Patreon. Right, I right. do what I do. You know, it's just there. If people want to help, they can. Yep. But don't, don't. I'm telling you not to. I have monetized videos as well, and I have them for ages. Yeah. And that's just, you know, if it helps, if it frees up an hour so I can spend a bit of time making a bit of content, which is exactly what we're doing now. Sure. Then. You know, it's not costing the, – the thing with me, and I've always said this, is that I would never want to take money off people that are suffering because they're paying enough, Yeah. you know, with the way that they feel. So to take a couple of dollars off a CEO somewhere in freaking California, yeah. I ain't leaving, losing no sleep over that. So Fair enough. If you don't, don't want to watch the ad, click skip. Skip, yeah. If you do want to help, watch the ad. And then go to another video and watch another ad. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So we threw it out there. I'm sorry. I, I don't know if I should have mentioned it or not, but I did get asked. Oh, it's so. fine. You shouldn't. Uh, who cares? Yeah. It's not affecting anybody. The people that we care about are the people that suffer with anxiety. That's and true. they're not paying for ads. That's so. true. That's true. Well, if you've hung in with us uh, the full hour listening to you've us. You've done very well. You've done very well. And you deserve. We should probably pay you. Like yes. <laughs> to listen to us babble for an hour. Yes. So Here's some like technically we are kind of done with anxiety 101, but uh, we had a couple of other that the medication thing comes up all the time. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe we'll do one on that and extend the series a little bit. But uh, otherwise, I think people seem to enjoy that we do this. So we should probably find a way to continue doing these on a, on a fairly regular basis, even though we don't have a specific article to talk about. I was thinking maybe if we was to take things that are maybe – in the news or if there's certain topics that people would like to see us sure. maybe talk about, you know, sure. because there's plenty of stuff. There's plenty of stuff out there. We've yeah. said that it's being watered down here, there and everywhere. So surely we can find something to pick up on. And, Probably. you know, I like the just off the cuff chatting. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's working out. It's well. always good with me. If people want to see it, which they we appear to believe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah so, all right, so we'll come up with something for the next episode that I don't know when it's going to be, but we'll come up with something, I'm sure. 
And for those of you who have been watching, thank you very much. I know we both appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, we've, we've enjoyed. I've yeah. enjoyed. I've yeah, definitely me too. learned stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been a lot of good time. So, I, of course, where you're going to find everything, thatanxietyguy.com. Start on my website, anxietyunited.com for Billy. New website. Check it out. It's good. It's good. You did a really good job Basically, with that. I will just say it's just pretty much content sharing. So if you've got like a story to tell or if you want to share an image or – a whatever. video or whatever it is you can go on you can upload you can share it it's yeah. good there's social stuff on there there's questions cool it's just good it's cool i've enjoyed making it yeah, but not cool. as much as i've enjoyed making these videos <laughs> like subscribe yes yeah, smash the button the good youtubers smash, smash that like smash button. that subscribe button and hit the little bell icon yes. anyway that's All right, the, i think that's the problem yeah people don't press the bell and then they don't get notifications they don't and, know. Yeah, come on missing out on all our wonderfulness yeah <laughs> All right, I guess we'll wrap it up. We'll see you guys in the next one. Yes. All right, Bill. See you later. Enjoy. Yeah. Thanks. Ta-ra.